Friday, everyone. Today does feel like Friday. I'm going to the beach. You're like, Jed, maybe get some color this round. I'm going to think about it, all right? I'm going to get some sun. I'm going to come back. I'm going to look like a new woman. Don't you worry. Right, Tyler? Tyler's not paying attention. He's involved in some type. I don't know what he's doing over there. Got the double laptops. Well, welcome, everyone, uh, to the show. We have a very special guest today. Today's the Shoot the Shit. I know you love Shoot the Shit. So today we have Anthony Mendez. I'm going to intro him in a second. Tyler is here as well. I want to remind everyone, first of all, you know you need to hit your subscribe button. You know you need to hit your like button. So don't disappoint me. You know, I get angry, hangry, combination of the two when that happens. Not good for anyone. So please, please, please do that to show your support. Um, Also, I'm going to be checking in with the chat at the midway point. So figure around 1.30, I'm going to check in. I want to hear your questions. I want to hear your comments. We're going to answer some. And then at the end of the show, we're also going to check in. So Tyler's going to flag me in case I forget, right, Tyler? We made some rules prior to the show. You know how I go off on tangents and can't be stopped? This is no surprise to anyone. All right. So today we have a very special guest. You know, I love my fitness. I do my best. What can I say? We have Anthony Mendez. He is. I'm going to do a proper introduction, and then we're going to get to chatting. He is the owner of Fit Pro Agency. He's a business coach. He's a fitness coach. He's a social media influencer. He's an athlete for Puma, a renaissance man, one could say. Uh, He's the co-host of Sweat It Out podcast, an influencer for the Miami Heat and the Miami Dolphins. His website is Mendez Fitness. I always want to say Menendez. I want to put an (laughs) E-N in there somewhere. We got a ton of Menendez, too. There you go. And Menendez. (laughs) His website is MendezFitness.com and TheFitProAgency.com, where you can check out his content as well on Instagram. He does a lot of like really cool stuff. That's where I found him. 2016, he founded MF Pro, a community for sports enthusiasts and a platform where she ha- he shares exclusive content related to workouts, not just workouts, guys, though, nutrition, business, social media taxes. So if you are uh, an influencer out there, a social media person, you want to you're into fitness, you want to blow up your Instagram. This is the guy you're in the gym and you're getting bored. This is the guy you're wondering what's going on with personal training these days. Has it lost its mind? This is the guy. He's going to weigh in on it all. We're going to agree. We're going to disagree on some things. I'm sure that's what he's here for. <laughs> he's been warned that I'm a little crazy. So welcome, Anthony. I appreciate you having me on. Now, this is a topic, I don't know if you know, near and dear to my heart. I met my husband in a gym. Uh, we were both working out a few years ago, and we had the same trainer at the time, and he introduced us. So fitness is like not only about exercise for me, but it's also a love connection. Mm. So I'm just saying. All right, so you have a very extensive background in fitness. I want to start, I love fitness. I love the gym. I love working at inside the gym, outside the gym, but I have some pet peeves when it comes to the gym. What are your pet peeves? One of my pet peeves is personal trainers who spend whole sessions gossiping Mm. with the clients. I'm seeing it a lot in South Florida, I'm just going to say. So... Oftentimes, there's two things that go wrong for me in a gym. One is that, because you're paying for a trainer, right? It's got to be worth it. It's got to be like, you're you're putting money out there. I see either trainers who don't know what they're doing. I see, you know, somebody doing squats, that knee's going over the toe. (laughs) I see a lot of crazy stuff happening. They're not paying attention. Or I see it becomes like a combination of like therapy hour and gossip hour. But like very little working out is actually getting done. So do you see that? Is that common or is that... Like, do you walk into a gym and see trainers and start to twitch? Like, what are they doing over there? <clears throat> like, do you want to fix oh, it? You, you're you're going to get all sorts of craziness. Like, I've been in the industry for over 12 years. And I'll tell you, like, working from corporate gyms to working in studios, private studios, an independent coach to owning my own gym, you see it all. You see it all. And don't be wrong. There's great and amazing trainers. But you are going to come across those trainers where you see them standing on their phone while their clients doing the reps um you'll see where they're just constantly talking to another trainer or they're talking to another member while the client's doing their own thing or the things you were saying and 100 percent it's going to be annoying as a paying client you're there to get your service at that full detailed um experience in that session so yeah. you need your coach paying attention to every little thing that's going on and being able to communicate with you properly back and forth i find it hard to resist the urge because i been so into fitness for so long when I see someone doing something wrong like internally I want to be like oh like what how do I you know because you know you get injured yeah. like that's the yeah. thing so if you know better and you've learned from your own mistakes I made plenty of mistakes I worked with um, a couple of trainers in New York one who was amazing 
one who was a little wild. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, <laughs> don't need to uh, elaborate no on stories. that one, on that point. <laughs> um, but, you know, you see stuff wrong and you want to. So as a trainer, I always think about this. If you're a trainer and you're in a gym, how do you resist that urge to like intervene if you see something that is going terribly wrong? What do so, you do? So trainer when you see another trainer doing something with a client or would yeah. you say trainer to seeing a random member both. doing something? Both. both. Is it different? Like, do, do you interview? Definitely in, different. Okay. Definitely different. So I would say like, if you're a trainer and you see one of your fellow colleagues, another trainer who's maybe doing something that's going to be unsafe for that individual, number one, as your job, you should definitely address it because as a trainer, you want to educate and you want to be able to make sure that person doesn't get hurt. Number one. But there's a way to do things. You don't want to be that asshole trainer that comes in there and also wants to kind of portray a power trip and kind of embarrass that trainer in front of their client, mm. you don't want to do that either. You know what I mean? So you want to approach it in a way where it's like, hey, after that session, pull that trainer to the side and be like, hey, brother, hey, sis, like, I want to talk to you real quick mm -hmm. and express to them what you saw, what happened. Let them know, hey, just want to give you advice. I'm not here to just tell you like, bashing. I just want to tell you so you can keep your client safe and also as well, it's going to make them get better results. Have you ever done that and had totally. someone react badly? Uh, have someone be like, don't tell me, like have a fight out, a duke out in the gym. <laughs> I guess it's more the approach, right? Like I haven't, luckily I haven't, like if I want me bring approaching it, me approaching it like that, I haven't had a bad situation. Okay. I've heard of situations like that happen amongst, even with the gyms that I worked, but I always try to approach it in the best way where it's not going to make it seem like where I'm trying to come off like an ass. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's more about the delivery. If you deliver it properly. And obviously, not everybody's going to go and take it the same way. But luckily for me, I've been able to, the, the three times I've done it, they've taken it and they're like, oh, I appreciate it. Thanks for letting me know. And I think there was only one time that the person just kept doing it. Yeah. And then I said, hey, look, man, like, I see you keep doing this. Like, you really care about your client? <laughs> you, you went back I mean? in. He went back in. Oh, yeah, well, that's totally. that's brave. Totally. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I would advise you to do that in New York City. That could lead to serious <laughs> consequences. <laughs> All right. I want to ask you, we're in a weird time now, post COVID. Um, everyone kind of went through some changes and especially in some cities like New York City where everything shut down. Then if you didn't get the vaccine, you couldn't get into gyms. People had to adjust the way they looked at working out. So this in-person personal training kind of fell away for a lot of people and a lot of apps popped up. You have now a lot of trainers that are putting apps out there of their own. So I find it's not the same. I find like I can't get the same workout even virtually with the same trainer or on an app with a stand in. They have these like stand in trainers now or a Peloton. I can't get the same thing out of that that I can get with an in-person trainer. I, I don't feel like it's in the same stratosphere for me. But do you feel like in-person personal training is now going to just slip away and become a thing of the past? Is that disappearing? And uh, what does that mean in terms of like form? Because it's very hard to get your form corrected if you don't have a live person sitting in front of you. Totally. So I would say, you know, that's a great point you brought up. So I would say, number one, like when it comes to the personal training industry fading out, it's never going to fade out. Like at the end of the day, people who want one-on-one -on -one attention in person, they're going to go look for that. And that's mm. going to still be a, a service that needs to be provided. Now, where are things headed to in the future? As you can see the numbers, things are moving more forward with online. Yeah. You're seeing more things with you know, at home, smart equipment tools, apps, you're just seeing an, a, a, a big increase, especially after COVID. COVID, I say COVID sped everything five years into the future, yeah. especially when it comes to the fitness industry. Like you just see it because online was already there and some of these equipments was already there before even COVID. It just wasn't as big as it is now. And COVID made that push and people are realizing, well, I can still hit certain goals I want to achieve. I can hit certain results. I have more flexibility to do this by now being able to do it online or through my smart equipment, through my apps. But of course, there's always a special uniqueness when it comes in person. There's certain things that in person provides that online doesn't provide. But here's the thing, there's certain things that online provides that in person provides. So the way I look at it, I don't look at it as like one's better than the other. I look at it as like, number one, what does that client need at the moment? Mm -hmm. um, number two, also as well as a trainer, understanding that if you put all your eggs in one basket, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot in the long run. What you see most of them doing is a lot of the one in one on one in uh, in person coaches, they're having a hard time. Some of them to like say, man, I don't want to go online. It's like this whole thing where it's like, mm -hmm. I got to want to, I don't want to. What's going on is like, you're going to need to, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. if you don't, you are going to lose a lot of business or your business is going to take a hit. So look at it more as like you're doing a, a disservice by not having some kind of hybrid component or online component to your offering already 
to make that experience for your client much better. Because here's the thing. If you have your client, or let's say you work with them in person, right? If they go out of town or you get sick, what's going to happen? Or you take a vacation, mm -hmm. that person is not working with you right now. But what if you had that in-person client, they went out of town or you got sick or you went on vacation and you had an online program or check-ins or videos, modules that they can continue on during that time, mm -hmm. they're still getting results, they're happy, and you're still providing that job and service without having to be there right there in the moment. See, I feel like that can work. I know you said like one's not better than the other. And obviously from a business perspective, you're speaking about wanting these trainers to make money and, you know, and to kind of like move in the direction that the world is going. I feel like online only works when you have a solid relationship established with that trainer first in person and when you kind of intermix it. So for example, I was working with a trainer in New York for a while. I did a lot of in-person sessions with him. It was great. I knew, understood his vibe. He knew what I was inclined to do wrong. You know, I always with my squats tend to lean up a little bit a certain way. So he was aware of that. So then we went online during COVID for a little while and it was okay because he knew like already enough about me mm. to say this is what I need to look for let me like look in the camera let me make sure she's doing this right and then we would intermix that with you know some in person as well I feel like if you mix it up it's okay what I worry about is people who now exclusively are online and it's impossible first of all if you're not working with someone that's you know a trainer that's responding to you what if your form is wrong and you go through that whole hour and you're doing more and more reps like that? So it makes me nervous that even though the world's moving in this way, like is it in the best interest of people and in fitness to kind of be operating this online module now? That's what worries me. Gotcha. And I would say like, there's a time and place for everything, right? So yeah. I would say like, I think that any trainer that becomes new, newly certified, I even tell them like ones that want to go online, I tell them, hey, I think it's a good idea for you to get your feet wet also with in person. Yeah. I always recommend that because I'm, my job is not to bash. I don't bash in person. I love in person. Yeah. It has its place. Like and like right. online has its place. Um, Cause you'll hear a lot of online business code. Other ones they'll start saying, well, in person training doesn't, it's not the same anymore. You know, why I get into it. And I, and, and I get where the business component, yes, there's more of a, of a growth uh, mm -hmm. component on the on online side, but in person is very important and you will learn certain things that you can do when it comes to queuing, when it comes to communication, when it comes to uh, technique examples, when it comes to showing uh, your client what they need to do that will translate much more effectively online. And I believe that there has to be a time and place for everything. Yeah. So for any new coach, 100%, I will encourage you to get your feet wet in person while you're doing the online because you will, it's only gonna help. It's only gonna help. What are the things that you find people do wrong? Are there certain exercises that you always see things happening wrong or like what do you see that's wrong most in the gym other than people doing outlander stuff we're going to get that to that yeah, at the end. yeah but what what is something like that you just pick up on that more often than not you're like oh oof, oof, it's just popping up a lot yeah. for you so i would say i think a lot of people just need to spend more time in owning their body first i think a lot of people don't even know how to own their own body what does weight. that mean own your own body weight like learn how to be able to master your body weight strength like learn how to be able to do movements with your own body or with a very light load or with just a bar like master those movements first before throwing load because when you throw load that's where the issues come because that's what happens is if you're throwing load under something that you haven't mastered that's where you're going to start seeing the discrepancies that's where you're going to start putting load under areas that maybe aren't fully functional yet to be able to have the right range of motion to get through that certain exercise with load under because now you're under tension you have load under tension so you're putting yourself in a position more prone for injury if you don't know how to move that bar correctly with weight so i always tell people all the time before going crazy and putting all this crazy weight all this load right master just the bar first master just your body weight first right put a little bit of load light enough just for you to be able to learn how to engage your muscles learn how to activate your muscles because a problem i see a lot of times people and typically you see a lot more with men mm -hmm. where they just want to go in let me throw let me throw on two three plates on in here let me just go i want to lift heavy and it's great it's not saying that lifting heavy in certain times of your program is not important it is but if you can't even control your own body weight, you can't even control the bar properly or lightweight, what makes you think you're going to be under this heavy load and not get hurt? And I think people need to take a step back and understand the movements, master the movements much better, 
get strong with your own body, get strong just with the bar and learning how to move that bar properly and then enter with load. That to me, so, that's how I always like to approach. If you can talk to like, I don't know if there are any beefcake guys out in the audience. That's not offensive, by the way. I mean, like, mm, I like a little bit. You know, I like a little meat on the bones. I'm just saying. If you can talk to them for a second about like the what I immediately heard in my head if I was getting into their head was Ugh, body weight is just like not going to work for me. Like it's not enough. It's not masculine and I need weight. I need weight. So can you talk to them about the fact that you work with body weight, you can build muscle and also those same guys oftentimes don't incorporate things. And I know they're going to roll their eyes at me right now when I say this, but like yoga or like I had a male trainer that was like, you need to incorporate this because on off days, you need to make sure that you're getting that flexibility. So you're not going to get injured when you though, when you then go in the gym and you hit hard, heavy weights. Can you just put that in a way that like people inclined to want to just pack weight yeah. on, understand the importance of those other totally. things. And it works with phases. Like it doesn't mean like, Oh, because I'm doing this body weight stuff that now I can get stronger and bigger. Does it mean that I can't work my way up to here it's about working your way up properly you know and this is where you need to have a good healthy blend of mobility flexibility stability and strength you need to have that and that's important you want to make sure you have that in your programming you want to make sure that you're owning those things so that way you can keep on progressing without injury and property and you're getting the right results mm -hmm. you know how many guys i've worked with in the past of when i was a trainer that they'll be big guys i'm talking about big guys they'll be stuck they reach a plateau and they're like, I can't put on, I just can't get stronger. I'm not putting on, I can't put more weight on my bench. It's just not increasing. And for them, it's not a, it's not a problem about, oh, it's because you're not putting enough weight to get stronger. The problem is you don't have enough range of motion to access strength that you have hidden to be able to keep getting stronger. So if anything, let's take a step back for a month and let's just work on your mobility. What does that look like working on mobility? Oh, it could be different things. So like, let's say, for somebody who's dealing with a, you know, let's say they want to get strong with their bench press, right? You know, a lot of these guys, their shoulders, their lats, they're all locked up. These guys have no range of motion, complete range of motion to get to the proper range to be able to push that weight and be able to access extra strength that's hidden because of their overdevelopment of their primary muscles. And if you're not also working your secondary muscles, which is another thing, you're losing on a ton of strength there too. So you really want to open yourself up doing mobility drills to get more access of range of motion, get more access to hidden strength that you didn't even know you had. And then also as well, working your secondary muscles, which support your primary muscles. Because if you're heavy primary muscle focused, that's going to lead to injury. Because mm. believe it or not, your secondary muscles, those little muscles around your primary muscles, those are very important. A lot of people like to avoid that. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, when you start focusing on that, you'll see your numbers increase. And I've gotten guys where it's like, we haven't even, we haven't even touched the weight for a month. How am I going back to this bench and, and benching much more than I was before? And it's like, dude, it's not because you're not strong. It's because you weren't accessing strength that you had because you were so tight and locked up. You just need a more range of motion. Does you that involve a lot of like stretching or when you say increasing mm -hmm. range of motion, is it like using bands? Is it, what does that look like? Different techniques. There's diff you can use certain bands. You can also do certain, just with your own body weight, certain movements and techniques okay. um, to be able to acquire a range of motion, even including your breath. Oh, through wow. these motions as well will open up and give you more access to different ranges of motion in your body um i'm telling you if we had a bigger screen and we can stand up i'd take you through one right now may, we may do that one <laughs> offset one day we may hey. bring the cameras and go do a session there because i can tell you i have like some stiffness like i've noticed that i had a shoulder dislocation injury years ago from doing some spider-man work on the trx i don't know what i was thinking um but yeah i've noticed sometimes i'll hit a plateau and i wind up just switching up the exercises but sometimes that's not enough it's like your body is kind of looking for that openness yeah. you need access and yeah and here's the thing like this is where it comes back to like individuals who are starting to train or starting to even people members who don't have a trainer they're going to the gym they don't know so a lot of these they just see what they they just see what they see they copy other people they see what they pop up on the internet or yeah. what they've known from their past you know from high yeah. school weight room or college <laughs> yeah. weight room which isn't that's always the know. best form. and it isn't <laughs> it isn't always the best so it, that's why i say trainers are so important and they're so valuable because yeah. it's, it's, it's like anything. You hire an expert to help you, you know? And I tell you right now, the most important thing is, you know, understanding where your current level of fitness is at mm -hmm. and also as well, finding out what you have access to, how strong you, like your strengths, your weaknesses, and then also figure out like where are your dysfunctions, mm -hmm. you know, where are your, where are your asymmetries? Because if you have asymmetries in their body and you don't have, you're, you're not as close symmetrical as possible, now you're loading dysfunction. And if you're loading dysfunction, that's where pain and injury comes. Because now you're loading one side more with weight 
on a part that hasn't even been corrected yet, right. you're 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 screaming for an injury, and the injury doesn't happen at the moment. You gotta understand, people don't people think sometimes these injuries happen right now. No, 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 no. All these athletes, all these people that you see get hurt, ACL tears, Achilles tears, rotator cuffs. It's a compound effect. It's a lead up. You're, mm. It's an over wear and tear of never f addressing the real problem. You're just band-aiding it and you're just putting more stress, more stress, more stress until that tendon or ligament is like, boom, gone. Yeah. I can't take it anymore. Yeah. And that's what happens. I can tell you, I ran track in college, uh, in high school, I'm sorry, and then college lifted weights for 20 years. I didn't stretch. I didn't stretch at never, not after, not before. And then I started noticing it, you know, a couple of years ago, I was like, what am I doing? And I had that trainer in New York. He's like, your, your muscles are completely tight. Like you need to stretch it. What are you doing? Yeah. I got very lucky that I didn't have more injuries as a result of that. But, um, and I don't know why that happened. Maybe it was because I was like, you know, spacing days out yeah. or whatever I was doing. But man, it's, it's when you do start stretching and then you work out after it's that, you realize thing. like, whoa, yeah. I'm it's in a, a different difference. body. I'm like a slinky. All, I'm gummy. <laughs> all that felt amazing. You can uh, warm up. And I would say just to, you know, with the stretching, so yeah. people don't get confused. Dynamic stretch at the beginning, you can do your more cool down static stretching at the end. Don't ever go into uh, doing static stretches when you're cold, when you before a workout. If you're just holding a position, you're holding a stretch, think about it. Like if you have your, your so we have um, over our muscles, we have what's called fascia, fascia tissue. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that, think about it as like, let's see, this is my shirt, it's the tissue over the muscle. My wrinkles, this is what happens with your tissue over your muscle. It starts wrinkling up. So if you don't wear that, if you don't break that down, like foam rolling or doing certain mobility drills, mm -hmm. what happens, think about it. You have that on your tissue. Now you're doing a static stretch. You're just making that worse. It's like grabbing a, a rope that has a loose knot and you're just tightening the knot. Yeah. Yep, so yep. static stretch, cool downs, wait till you do that after your, your workout. Do dynamic stretches, mobility drills, stretches that require movement. Mm, okay. So that's what you want to do before okay, your workout. Cool. I have a tricky question for you. Yeah. You ready? Male or female personal trainers, who is in higher demand, do you think? Um, and is it is it dependent upon the age of the person looking? Like, what, what are you seeing in like terms of trending? Like, what are people trending? looking for more? Who's looking for what? What are people looking for more? That's a good question. I would say it's, for me, I would say it's more dependent on the person. I would say, I think in Miami, you always see a lot of, a lot of the like the older males typically like to go for the females like the young female oh really trainers. okay yeah, you know think of you're here in miami they're gonna want okay the pretty looking personal trainer girl and you know for them they're like oh i get to talk to her she's gonna train me cool you see that typically i think with the what you see more it's like um men who work with other male ones tend to be ones that are really trying to achieve certain like um, trying goals, to like specific up. goals and I want to say just bulk up but if, yeah you could say bulk up or you could say sport, sport specific goals okay. or they're trying to prepare for something like a marathon or mm -hmm. like some kind of competition or something you know you'll see a, a, a male individual work with like a male trainer or so uh, but when it comes to like the older group of males I'm talking about like we're talking about like 45 maybe even 50 and higher they typically like to go for the women trainers from what I Wow, seen. that's surprising to me actually because I always feel like guys would gravitate toward male trainers in the sense that they feel like well they're stronger like I don't know if a girl's going to be able to give me a great workout but I guess the you know the visual the visual aid and a lot of these a lot of these old <laughs> Maybe guys that's their hey, inspiration the, the visual aid these, these old guys they hit their you know their 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 crisis their life crisis and they're like well imagine I, that <laughs> honey i'm gonna go work out with my trainer he says to his wife says, okay i'll see you later wife looks out on the beach and is like hmm what's going on over there hot oh, young man. 25 year old uh, just got, doing those lunges spandex I, I got stories <laughs> oh yeah i'm sure i'm sure i used to have a perception when i was younger i used to always say you know and this was wrong i it was i was like oh let me get a male trainer he'll work me harder and then i got a female trainer that was like ripped and i was like i Kicked would leave ass. there like i was just <laughs> on the floor i was like like just i looked like something that you know What's his name? Vecna and Stranger Things would spit out. I was just like, ah. <laughs> so, you know, it really does. It's not really about gender. It's more about like technique and about, you know, expertise in these areas. So I was uh, flawed in that in that realization for a while. Um, so and I'm curious about this, too, because you do a lot of social media branding. And one of my concerns is like 
a lot of fake trainers now. Everyone thinks they're a fitness influencer. Oh, Everyone man. on Tell the planet. Me about it. It's like, oh, I know, I go to the gym, so I must be a fitness. And everyone's trying fitness to get these deals. Fitness enthusiast selling programs. Right. I'm just so. Oh, is this man. a problem for the real trainers out there? Because first of all, I think it's a problem because those people may not know what they're doing. A lot of times, these people aren't even certified. They're just totally. at the gym. You know, I totally. see people that are in my building. They come down with a tripod. One girl in particular is hilarious. She comes down with her tripod. She's in the gym for about an hour. She works out for about four minutes and the rest is just taking video. And most of the exercises she's doing, she's doing them wrong. So it's like, just like my head explodes the whole time. But is this a problem for you in this day and age with where there's like a lot of competition among very attractive, fit people who aren't qualified to be giving advice and now your trainers who are qualified have to compete with them on social media platforms. Yep, so so it's funny, I love this topic. So it is a problem because you're allowing a lot of these fitness enthusiasts who are coming in here, might look ripped, might look good, who knows what they're on, whatever. They're coming here and now bringing a lot of circus style act exercises where I'm like, this is ridiculous. A lot of things are gonna hurt their clients. Yeah. A lot of things just don't make sense, you know? So that is a problem. But the bigger problem, I'll tell you what the bigger problem is. The bigger problem are the great coaches that are constantly complaining about these fitness enthusiasts are like, why do they have 500,000 followers? Why do they have all these clients? Why are they, how are they working with all these people? And I'm a great coach. I have all this knowledge. I got degrees. I got certifications. That's the big, the bigger problem is them not wanting to learn the marketing, the branding, the social media, mm. so they can go on there and compete with those individuals. So they can stand out and actually give those individuals the right proper coaching that they deserve. So what I told is the same thing. That individual might not co know coaching, but they know how to market themselves really well. You need to learn how to market. You're great at coaching, but you're not good at marketing. You're not good at branding and maybe even sales. So you by you want, you want to counteract that and fix that issue? You have to put yourself out there. You have to brand yourself. You have to go out there and learn sales. You have to go out there and give a crap about your 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 business and put yourself in these different platforms so you can compete with that individual and that's how you're going to defeat the problem. But if you're constantly hiding yeah. and complaining, you're not doing anything about it. Yeah. So for me, I feel like that's the bigger problem where a lot of them will sit back and just complain, point the finger. This is what social media has done. No, this is what social media can do for you. Right. Get your ass up and let's get to work. Yeah. Like, and I understand that inclination of like, you know, I kind of hate social media in some capacity as well because it's forced us to kind of always be online and we're always looking at our phones. But this is the world we live in. So it's just a reality that this is the world. It's a competitive world. So if you're a fitness trainer and you want to compete in that world, you're going to be competing yeah. with a lot of people that do care about social media. Exactly. And do take the photos and do, you know, put up the sample videos and do have it branded. So it's your choice. It's like the Internet. When the Internet came out, look at the newspapers back in the in the in the early 90s. Oh, the Internet's not going to work. What is this Internet thing? Ba -ba -ba -ba, everybody yeah, investing. Right, right. And look what the Internet has done now. So it's the same thing with social media. Like there's a lot of things I don't like about it but it is become a necessity where you need it for your business, for your brand. Mm -hmm. It's just more about how you approach it. I think a lot of times yeah. like, and that's what I've come to learn is like how you approach your platforms, how much time you spend on your platforms doing what you're supposed to do. Because yeah. most people go on their platforms, they do a little bit of what they're supposed to do for their business and they get, then they get caught in the rabbit hole of, let me scroll a little bit. Let me go look at this page. Oh, ESPN. Oh, this one came up. Yeah. Oh, look at this hot girl. Look at this hot guy. Look, and then they follow this rabbit. Oh my God, it's 2 p.m. I've been on here for two hours eating shit. So what happens is social media has a good job at getting your attention, mm -hmm. right? And it creates that addiction factor of like, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. So what you have to do is be better at having a better high performing schedule where you plug in times of like, I'm gonna come here with an objective into my account. This is what I need to do. Then I'm gonna take a break, go work on other stuff for my business, come back in here, mm -hmm. make some conversations. You have to have a plan of how to use your social media. And then at most you catch yourself only an hour to two hours max in the day. Mm -hmm spread yeah. it out on your social max yeah and you're not going to be there six seven hours i got people friends who don't even have businesses on social media where i'll sit there and they'll be like man you must be on your social your activity must be eight nine hours and i said no man my activity is like one and a half to two hours and like how is that possible and i said let me look at yours and they have like seven hours of activity I'm like dude <laughs> What are they you doing? don't even work on social media. How are you seven up? You know, and it's, and it's, and it's, it's a trap though. It's, it's a scroll a, it trap. It is a trap. It is a it trap. Is a so trap. I always say you have to have a plan on mm -hmm. how you approach this so it doesn't consume you.
Yeah, absolutely. How much of it is being fit? Like how much of it is the exercise and how much of it is the food? Because I find that there are people that are willing to go into the gym and they'll pound weight and they'll spend two, three hours a day in the gym and then they'll go home and they won't be conscious of nutrition at all. And it, and then they're like, well, why do I have this big belly or why do I have, how much of it is diet to you? It's huge. I would say at least 70%. 70%. Yeah. You guys at home. I would say at least 70%. 70%. Some people diet. even say 80. You know what I mean? Like the reason why is because you cannot you cannot out exercise what you eat. You just can't. So yeah. if you're stuffing pizza and you're stuffing all these foods you're not supposed to, you know, and it doesn't mean you can't enjoy them because I'm all about also enjoying your life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And enjoying the lifestyle you deserve and enjoying a meal with friends in a, in a birthday party or in an event. Yeah. I'm not about creating stress and holding yourself out and being paranoid. Oh my right. God, I can't grab that little single cookie. I That's not good either. But I'm all about what are your goals? Where are you currently at with your health? What are the changes you need to make, be making and being conscious of, of the things around you, the approach you're taking. And if you really care about your health, then you need to make sure that you are eating properly. Right. And this mean this means like having the right nutritional foods that have the right vitamins, the right minerals, the right everything that's going to help you, number one, recover properly from your workouts. And also as well, that's going to give you the energy to function throughout the day. Yeah. Because that's what that's what it is. Food is fuel and food is medicine. Like it is medicine. I like, always say that food go. is medicine. It's like one of my favorite. Food and movement is medicine. I say movement is medicine. True. Food is medicine. It's the more true. you move, the more you, the more nutritious, nutri uh, nutritional food you eat, the more you're going to put good medicine in your body. And I think more people need to understand that, you know, as much as you might be doing the exercise part, great. But you can't out exercise, outwork what you're putting in your mouth. So yeah. you need to make sure you're on top of your food. And my approach is very simple. This is not for, for an individual who maybe is not accustomed to eating the healthiest. My whole approach is not, let's not go in here and fucking shock you and say, hey, we're going to take everything away from you. Right. No, we don't want to do that either. We're going to come in here and we're going to make baby step changes. So, you know, if you are somebody who doesn't even have greens in your meal, my first thing might be like, hey, look, um, let's do this. Can you commit? And I'll say, can you 100% commit to just adding one kind of green? I'll let you pick. It could be broccoli, asparagus, peas, whatever green you want. Yeah. Can we just add that to one of your meals, lunch yeah. or dinner? Pick. And I'll let them pick. So that way they feel like they're in some kind of Feels control. manageable. Yeah. yeah. And then I tell them, are they in 100? And I ask them, are you in 100% control? Because now I'm putting back on them and they're telling themselves, I have control of this. So mm -hmm. That right there, in an essence, is huge. And if they can commit to that, just by adding that little green that they weren't eating before, it's going to make a huge difference. And then come back in two weeks to a month. Hey, how's that going for you? Oh, it's going great. Okay, so this is what we're going to do this week. Can we just add one extra glass of water a day? Like that? Can you commit to that 100%? Oh, I can definitely do that. And those little changes through time, because think about it, it's a compound. It's not yeah. one per day. It's I've had seven greens in a week. I've had seven extra glasses of water in a week times four right. in a month, that's a huge intake compared to what people yeah. were doing before. So up. those little micro changes, that's what I feel when it comes to changing people's lifestyle is more important than coming in here, just blasting them and shocking them up. And they're like, oh my God, everything got taken away from me. People don't like to have things taken away from them instantly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. ease them into it. And then the panic sets in. And then the panic sets <laughs> in. And then they decide to just throw their hands up in the air and That's say, it. I can't And then they rebound. It. Exactly, exactly. I want to ask you about something we talk about on the show a lot. I know it's a little controversial, but I've been very frustrated with the trend of glorifying obesity in this country and how magazine covers and the television industry, now in an effort to make everyone feel comfortable in their own skin has decided to ignore actual health. And there's a glamorizing of, you know, obesity is healthy. And, you know, you see people who are grossly obese on the cover of a magazine and they're saying this is healthy, this is fit, and it's not. Reality is that they're predisposing themselves to a number of, of health conditions as a result of that behavior. As someone in the fitness industry, how do you deal with that? That like, does that feel like a slap in the face to what you're doing every day? And how do you manage those conversations with people where you have to just be honest about weight and what it does to the body, that excess weight? Totally. And I'll say, like I said, in one of my posts, this is one of the things I'm like, I'm tired of the bullshit, you know, because it's like, it's gotten to the point where, where people are just accepting being okay at a weight that is unhealthy. And it's because of a lot of these agendas and narratives that are constantly being pushed down people's throats through Hollywood and media and magazines and TV and all this stuff because we don't want to hurt people's feelings and everything's trigger friendly now and everything's sensitive. And it's like, look, 
the whole thing about you know not hurting people's feelings there's one thing i said like in my post it's like there's a difference between fat shaming and glorifying obesity huge difference right you know what i mean if i'm over here bullying somebody because of their weight then that's my problem that's me who has to deal with whatever i'm dealing with i shouldn't be doing that but if i'm over here willing to accept that i'm going to glorify and show on magazine tv like embrace your obesity embrace this embrace what do you mean embrace this you're setting a bad example to all the other people who are overweight mm -hmm. All the children out there, because now you're getting more children who are becoming overweight and obese. Right. You know, pediatric facilities like babies are obese. It's, it's insane, it's insanity and it's going. sad because it's like that's only driving the country down a spiral with your health. We've already been having an obesity issue for a long time now, and it's funny because like for years we've always had that obesity problem and you know fast food issues. And I feel like a lot of people have been taking into account more their health than before mm -hmm. and all these more holistic uh, ways of, of being able to take care of themselves. But then you got this huge push on the other side of like, embrace your image, embrace the obesity, embrace, embrace this, embrace this. And it's like, guys, no, understand that if you allow that to manipulate you and you're gonna stay at this weight, 10, 15, 20, you might die. Right. Like you might die. Like it's just plain and simple. You will eventually die mm -hmm. from whatever disease you develop yep. or whatever problems come arise. And if you don't understand that this is gonna be a bad long term effect with you, then you lost already. Mm -hmm. And and look, as a professional, if I don't talk about it, then I'm not doing my part. You know, and that's why I always tell people, coaches, trainers, like, talk about it. Don't be scared to talk about it. Cause I feel like sometimes people are scared to talk about it because yes. they don't want to get attacked on social. I don't care. Attack me all you want. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, if anything, I'm going to bring the opposite spectrum that I've been seeing. And I've been seeing a lot of people um, fit shaming. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people now on the opposite side where they're constantly fit shaming people. Mm -hmm. They're attacking people for being overly fit and telling them, oh, you're sending the wrong message by being overly fit because you should be that fit. And what, how about the people who are not that fit? It's like, hold up. So now being fit and healthy is a problem? It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, you I definitely got something to work with here and here <laughs> yeah. that you have to work on. And it's not to, it's not to laugh at, make fun of that, but it's just like, what happens is, I've, and I've noticed a lot of people who, who've put themselves in this position is because they're dealing with a lot of insecurity. They've probably dealt with a lot of trauma in their life. They probably have tried losing some weight. They just didn't have the right help or the yeah. right answers, and they gave up too early. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is they didn't feel accepted. They needed to feel accepted in a group that's going to take them in. They wanted to be around friends that were going to take them in. And then those groups started happening, and that's where they feel comfortable. Yep. But that group is making you worse. Yeah. It's only doing you worse. I want to. We're going to check in. Tyler, I want to check in with you in just a second. Um, remember, everyone, to subscribe, 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 and hit your like button if you like this conversation that we're having right now. Um, Tyler, we'll get to you in one second if you have any um, um, questions over there. They, I just want to hit the flip side of this though for a second because one of the things that also concerns me on the flip side of obesity and on the flip side of people not exercising is people who over exercise. Mm -hmm. I also know people who have a very unhealthy relationship with exercise where it's like they're exercising two hours in the morning, two hours at night, and it's like they're kind of withering away or they're becoming so strict about food that now it's a, a neurotic kind of obsession. They can't go to a party. They can't do anything. It's like very, very restrictive and it causes anxiety and they don't look healthy. They look like they're over, they're maxed out in some capacity. Yeah. Do you have to have those conversations with people too where they're wanting to exercise and it's too much for the body and there's not enough repair? Yeah, 100%. That's an addiction. It's an addiction. They've, they've gotten too addicted to the point where it's like if they feel they missed that one meal or that one exercise that they're going to lose their whole entire goal or yeah. they're going to retrogress completely back and it's like no that's not true you know and that's why when i was saying earlier like if you go to a birthday party you go to an event like enjoy yourself yeah <laughs> like enjoy yourself like i've seen so many people where it's like and again look if you're competing for something if you have a competition i get it you there might be certain things you need to do if that's your sport that you're in doesn't mean it's healthy but if that's your sport and you need to reach a goal okay cool but that's not sustainable your entire life mm -hmm. that's only gonna that will cause health issues yeah for you and even for women even more Mm -hmm. You know, where you have women, they'll lose their menstrual cycle. Yes. You know, women, you know, who are at a really low body fat percent, they can't even, uh, they're not going to even be able to get pregnant properly. Mm -hmm. And if they do, it's very dangerous for the baby, very dangerous for the woman, mm -hmm. because women need to have a certain level of body fat percentage to be able to sustain that life in there. Yeah. So, and then for men, you see a lot of other issues. You know, mm -hmm. you see a lot of issues, especially for taking stuff like, you know, erection issues, yeah. testosterone issues. You see a lot of depression issues. So what I would say is for people who over obsess too, you have to take a chill for a second mm -hmm. because that stress and anxiety, believe it or not, is actually 
causing inflammation in your body, which will then in return will cause you to gain weight. Which Doesn't will then that cause, my understanding is that like that can cause like a cortisol spike or something 100%. with belly fat that can develop around the middle that is like, can be a stress induced condition. Definitely, okay. definitely. And that's why it's like, if you're so anxious and stressed out all the time because you can't enjoy that one little cookie right. at the event, that one little drink, <laughs> it's like, what, you're not living. Yeah, you you're, get you're one life, worse. man. That's Eat that it. cookie. Enjoy and yourself. Enjoy it as That's it goes it. down. Then yeah. everything in moderation. Look, when I worked <laughs> with my clients, I used to tell them, look, I know you got an event going on, right? Mm -hmm. This is your goal. This is what you want to achieve. You got an event. I know you're going to eat something at that event. My goal is not to take away. Let's just see. Let's just moderate to the point where it's like, what do you need? What don't you need? Okay. So you know you're going to sit down. You're going to have dinner. You want to have the drink or do you want to have that meal or do you want to have the dessert? Pick. Right. Pick one or pick two and then don't have the other one. It's all moderation and control. It's yeah. really what it is. It's fascinating. Tyler, I'm going to check in with you. Do you have anything in the chat that we want to bring up right now? Yeah, there's a few things. Cool. Um, first of all, uh, what is considered overweight? Is it personal? Can someone be overweight and unhealthy? But some can be overweight and stocky and be fit. Secondly, what are Anthony's thoughts on pre-workout, post-workout, and protein intake? Great question. So I would say when it comes to the ovary factor, it also depends also on the structure of the, of the person, right? Their body structure um, plays a big factor on what weight you're supposed to be at, your age, um, and then also as well, male or female. So I would say too, like there's guys or girls who stack up massive muscle weight and that's considered overweight for their structure. And, and with due time, they will suffer joint pain. They will suffer other problems because weight is weight, whether it's muscle or not. So even being overly muscular right. can cause future joint issues and other problems because that's not appropriate weight for your structure. So everybody's a little bit different to kind of that same thing with obviously with the, when it comes to on the fat side of things, you're going to have your repercussions and your issues too. So you have to kind of see, you know, uh, your, your height, your weight, your age, what is the appropriate uh, weight range for you? And also I always tell people all the time, like, it's how you feel, like see how you mm -hmm. feel, you know, test out with your clothes, you know, see your energy levels, just overall, like, do you feel like you're in a good place and do you feel happy? Like, that's yeah. important too. You know what I mean? I always say, look at that, not just the numbers, also go based on your feeling. Okay. And what about the pre-workout, post-workout protein? And protein is a big controversy yeah. now because you have two communities. I always say with food, it's like you've got the plant-based people and now you've got the people that are like, you need to be eating liver and kidney and beef yeah. and that's it. And it's like, the, I'm, I'm sure that there's there's somewhere in the middle of that is, is so what you should you, actually here, do. Here's my biggest thing when it comes to supplements. The word supplement is says it all, supplement. I don't like when people are, are, are using protein as meals or meal replacements. Pr supplements should never replace your food in the first place. Food should always be primary. Supplement is to supplement when you need to have that extra protein because of a workout and you, need, and you don't have access to food. Um, you need to take your protein shake, take it. Or for example, let's say you're in a, in a hurry and you know you can't get some food and you need to supplement with that something to be able to hit your, let's say if you have a goal, you have to hit your certain macros or so as well because you need to get fuel in your body. Take that, that, that protein shake. That's not a problem. And obviously there's different types of protein shakes out there. Some are better than the others. You know, you just have to make sure you read the ingredients in the back and just make sure you know the sources that they're coming from. That's a whole different topic. And then when it comes to pre-workout and post-workout, like for me, I've personally never been a fan of pre-workout. I just feel like what you do is that when you feed your body these pre-workouts, you're teaching your body that it cannot get into a stage of getting you ready for a workout unless you ingest this. Mm -hmm. So what happens, it's like coffee, right? You take coffee, 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 then your body starts telling you, well, I can't be energetic without coffee. If I don't take coffee, I'm going to be fruit down the whole day. So you teach your body, I need coffee. You're teaching your body, I need pre-workout. I don't like to teach my body that I need something yeah. to get me to do something. I need to teach myself, I need to do this because I need to do this and I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. So what happens is your body then starts depending on the pre-workout over time mm -hmm. because your, your body naturally is saying, oh, something's in here and, and interrupting us. Oh, we'll let it take control and just do what it's supposed to do. And then your body starts learning because your body adapts. Our bodies are smart. It adapts. It's going to adapt to whatever source you're giving it. Mm -hmm. So for me with pre-workout, I'm not a huge fan. I don't really take pre-workout. Never really took. I've tried it before. 
two, three times, don't like the feeling of it. A lot of people tell you, you get jitters, you get certain reactions, you should get certain, um, you know, other feelings from it. I don't like the feelings. I don't like reactions. And I just don't like the long-term effects of what pre-workout does to you. Yeah. I mean, one thing I noticed is that for me, I had some mineral depletion. So I was like low on some key minerals and electrolytes that made a big difference for me. So totally. now they have some companies that will have, you know, they'll add like the potassium, the magnesium ways to get that back in your system. So if you get really exhausted from a workout, you might want to check your minerals. That yeah. happened to me. It surprised me. And food source first I always. Eat, I eat really well, but even with that, I was like, hmm, some of these minerals are deficient. That's interesting. And that made a huge difference in terms of how I felt when I started upping those. Um, okay. I want to get to some articles uh, that we can pull up and get your Fun. reaction to some of this crazy stuff Let's out on, on the web. Um, so the first thing is from the Daily Mail. And it says how putting a bit of oomph into housework can keep you thin and safeguarded from dementia, from Hoover power lunges, those are uh, the Hoover vacuum cleaner guys, to dishwasher squats, mail on lines backed by experts guide to turn mundane chores into a workout. And essentially, there was a study that found that regular hoovering, vacuuming, ironing, taking out the rubbish in the middle and older age can lower your risk of dementia. And those who did housework most often were a fifth less likely to be struck down with the cruel memory robbing disorder than those who did the least. So it's interesting. They show you a chart you can see here, the audience can see of if you're in the house, instead of looking at this as a standard, go to the gym, do your exercises. These are people who, you know, were doing lunches while they were vacuuming. Every time you reach down to put clothes in and out of the dishwasher or to, uh, to fold clothes, I'm sorry, to put uh, dishes in and out of the dishwasher to fold clothes, you can do like a squat single leg surface cleaning. You're cleaning surfaces of your kitchen counter, but you're doing it on a single leg. So you're maintaining your balance, you're working your core, extra trips up and down the stairs. So I think it's important to like remember, I, I hear a lot from moms who are stay-at-home moms who are saying, I don't have time to go spend an hour or an hour and a half in the gym. What can I do? And there's whole companies that have popped up around this concept of like, you can utilize your home while you're doing other stuff, while baby is napping, while you can do stuff around the house that can get your heart rate up, that yeah. can make you feel like a workout. What do you think of like unconventional approaches to exercise? So I would say in this case, like, I'm for it for somebody who doesn't do anything at all or somebody right. who has limitations in the sense of like they don't have access to go to place or time reasons. I'm for it. Now, what I want them to understand, too, is don't think that this is going to solve all your problems. Right. Don't think that this is going to help you achieve that goal you're trying to achieve. What this is going to help you is just be more active and healthier than what you were before, which is great. I want that. Like, if this is what you can do right now, do it. I'd rather you do that than not do anything at all. And I think that, heck, if you can utilize certain things around your house and make it funner, like if you're, clean, you're cleaning already and you can get some extra steps, get your steps and go up the stairs. Yeah. You know, you know, if you want to do some lunges while you're vacuuming to get some movement in there and work out those legs, go ahead. You know, stand in one leg, you know, alternating, work on your, on your balance, your stability, build your legs as well. I'm all for it. Just understand that, because here's the thing, a lot of people will say, great, look at this new program. That, mm -hmm. That's not going to help you with your overall goal. It's not going to solve all your problems. So just keep in mind that don't think that this is just, that's it. This is yeah. great. I do this. I'm going to hit all my goals. Um, I'm going to be a healthy, super healthy individual. You will be healthier, but it's not going to help you achieve all your goals. So eventually your body needs more. Yeah. So your body needs to adapt again. Your body needs to be challenged. And if you don't challenge your body, you're going to just hit a, a plateau and stay stagnant. One thing that happened for me was that, and I know some people, you know, gyms can be expensive. A lot of people are struggling right now. One thing that I did is I was forced into it last year when we lived in New York City. I couldn't go to the gym. I didn't get the vaccine. I wasn't allowed in the gyms. You had, it had a vax mandate. You had to show your car. I wasn't getting the vaccine. I wasn't interested in the vaccine. So I didn't do that. I was forced to then do my workouts myself, either in home or right outside my house. So I used a lot of body weight. I bought some basic weights. I bought some bands. What I found when I returned to the gym structure when I came to Florida is that I was actually stronger than I had been before in all areas except one, and those were my pull-ups. That's my weak spot. I don't have strength there. It's pull-ups have always been really challenging for me. So I went from like, I couldn't even do a pull-up when I got here. I was like, oh my gosh. And it was the only thing I couldn't really mimic. Yeah. I could do push-ups outside. I could do every other, but I was like, I couldn't were you really doing assisted pull -ups? do um, I, I can do pull-ups. I can do unassisted pull-ups like now, but I couldn't do, do like when I got here, I couldn't even, I had to do with them assisted. Assisted. Yeah. yeah. I was able to do them. You put the band around, but that was the one area. So 
for people who feel discouraged by like, okay, I don't have access to a gym, you can go outside. Sometimes working out outside among the yeah. elements, very challenging. You have the wind. I worked out in the cold. I worked out in the heat. I, there was windy days. There was, you're battling the elements. Your body gets really, really strong. So people shouldn't feel discouraged by that. There's Where there's a will, there is a way. Obviously, a gym is going to feature a whole bunch of equipment that you're not going to necessarily have in your own home, but you can buy little bands. I bought them online. They were inexpensive. Um, by the time I was done, I was like, I had had my own little mini gym that I was really operating out of a garage at the time. I didn't have room for a home gym. So just a, a note of positivity for people who feel like, it's important. Oh, you know, and, and I'll say real quick too, like just changing one variable at a time, which I always say change one variable at a time is going to make a huge challenge on the body. Right. Yeah. And one variable is just enough. Like don't go and changing multiple variables. Just change one. You can literally grab, like you said, you can grab your indoor body weight workout. And for one month you do it outside. That's one variable change the weather. Right. That's a re you could do the same exact workout and you're going to get a whole different experience because now you're going to have to do you're going to your oxygen levels are going to change because you're going to require you to uh, to yeah. be able to be in the heat and breathe differently. So you're going to have a different impact on your body. You're going to also get uh, the impact in the sense of you're going to be experienced if you're on the grass. It's going to be a different level surface as well if you're used to being on the floor right. or cement. So you can change your variables just by your environment as well. And that can be already a challenge for you, mm -hmm. not even not even changing the exercises. Right. So I saw this article in USA Today. This is from February 2022. To be honest with you, Tyler, you can well, you can take a look at this too. I'm surprised they even printed this in this day and age. It says some women are sick of being harassed at gyms. Are women's only gyms fixing the problem? I was surprised that they said this because with all the talk of gender now and what's going on and you can't offend this and how this person identifies, I'm surprised that they would even talk about a women's only gym, to be perfectly honest. But essentially this fitness influencer, her name is Laura Lozier, I don't know if I'm saying her name right. I apologize if I'm not. She basically talks about how women are sick of being stared at in gyms mm -hmm. and harassed. And her experience, she says, is not uncommon. A recent survey, it says, of 900 women found 71% of them changed their workout routine due to a negative encounter, such as being watched, being followed around, or due to unwanted physical contact from men. As a result, they're talking about, you know, women's only gyms as an option that could provide safety, comfort, and a sense of community. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to just call horseshit on this right now from my perspective. First of all, I don't know any women that like going to women's only gyms for a lot of reasons. Yeah, wasn't there one Women's of America? There was a, there uh, yeah. are a couple. There's a couple in New York City. I, they don't like to go to them. I'll tell you why. A lot of people go to the gym because they like, they're working out and they like a lot of the attention that comes with it. That is a reality. They go there. They're, you don't go to the gym in a matching outfit, sexy, all dolled up, and you don't want people looking at you. That's not what's, they want the attention. So that's 100%. I also think you get a lot of energy from like seeing a lot of different types of people around you. Guys lift a lot of heavy weight oftentimes. That's very inspiring energy. I like to try to get in there in the weight room and like, you know, feel that. I don't mind having a little testosterone up in my space. I think it's kind of like good for me. Um, but I, and I also just feel like a lot of women go to these women's only gyms and they complain that the, the weight, they don't have enough a variety of weights. They don't have this, they don't have that. So I just, I don't buy this story. I don't feel that women feel that they're being harassed at gyms by men. I don't buy it. Do you, have you seen this? Have you heard this complaint? I haven't heard that. Um, I think it's like in, anything, like in anything, there's always gonna be stuff. There's always gonna be stuff. But to this extent, I haven't come across it. To this extent, I haven't heard anything. Yeah, I mean, this is 900 women, yeah. so who knows? Um, I think it's just more of a story just to create buzz. Yeah, I've just never heard. Tyler, have you ever heard of women complaining about being harassed at gyms or flocking to advocating for women's only gyms? No, um, it's like you said, most of the, not most, but a large majority of the girls that go are taking tripods with them to post on Instagram. Look at this, look at look at all, look at the social media content that's going out there. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, let's be real. You yeah. know what I mean? I said, let's be real. Like, you know, you got so-and-so there with shorts that you can see your whole ass cheeks They're naked in up, the gym. Let's call it straight. Naked with, it's like the cheeks are out. And then you're doing squats and, and RDLs <laughs> yes. and deadlifts right next to this dude. <laughs> All right. And then because he looks and now you're going to say, well, you know yeah. what I mean? Like my you're favorite, asking for it. My <laughs> favorite was there was a girl in a New York gym. No joke. in um, crunch gym used to be right next to my apartment building. And she went to the gym and she used to go naked, 
butt. Na- I'm not lying. Cheeks were out, boobies out. It was like all but nipple was showing. And I used to laugh because I was like, come on, what is this? It's like the meat market. Like, oh, I don't need to, I didn't I didn't pay to get into a strip club. I'm at the gym anyway. And she would lean over and I'll never forget one day she leaned over and I was even like, what is going on? Over-? I mean, it was all out exposed and a guy you could see was noticeably staring at her and she got an attitude with him and she was like, you should pay attention to your weights. Girlfriend, come on. So you know what you're getting yourself If a into. guy came to the gym and, you know, he had his package flowing out all over the place, you would be looking at it because Everybody's you'd be like, be what is going on over there? Come on. It's attention seeking. They want, it's either they, they want the attention or they want a problem. Yeah. That's, they're looking for something. And then they want to complain about it. They so if you're at the gym half naked, come on, oh, we a, see you. There's a really interesting comment that said those girls would be sad if no one looks at them. Yes. I, well, well, I think yeah. so, too. I mean, it's funny. I go to the gym and I look like a hot mess. I'm not going to lie. I don't look cute when I go to the gym. I put my baby, like my kid goes to a nap. The hair is piled up on top. I look like a mess. Like, actually, the, the least cute probably that I ever look in my life. But, you know, there was a time where I was different about it, you know, where I would like, you know, be a little more matchy matchy. But I also knew that I wanted a little bit of that, like, oh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to look in the mirror. I'm going to see myself looking good. Like I was you, you, you have to have some self-awareness in the totally, process. Totally. Some of these people just make me laugh. Honestly, it's like, it's you like know own what it, doing. own say, you what you're doing what you're moment doing. to moment. And don't it. be complaining you know about it. Oh, man. Guys, too, I think like to be noticed, 100 percent. you know, 100 percent. You see it all the time at gyms, too. Yeah. Come on, these guys coming in there with their shorts, the certain shorts up to here so that you can see their quads or they're wearing those muscle tanks so you can see them. Yeah, 100%. It, yeah. It's, it's an attention grab. The difference is, you you know, most of the guys are not going to go around complaining. Yeah. <laughs> I think I changed. Like now, I think what I really like is when I go into a gym, I feel really strong now. And I like when guys notice, like a guy will say to me, wow, like I'm little, but I'm strong. Yeah. It's always surprising to people. And I always feel like a really like, oh, like yeah, you, you know, that you. feels good to me. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't care about my outfit. Don't I don't care if I look cute, but I lifted that and you were surprised. So that always feels like my little Hulk moment, you totally. know, um, we got to own it. OK, the only time I will say, too, that it can be challenging. I don't know if you deal with any pregnant women or trainers that deal with I pregnant used women. to. I've I had okay. done with uh uh, pre and postnatal stuff. Yes, that I will tell you. <laughs> I had a big old belly when I was pregnant. I mean, I was th- I looked like this. Go back and look at my Instagram. I looked exactly like I do now with like a giant. So you'll belly. stand there from your back. You can't even. Tell. You could not tell I was pregnant. Uh, you could only. It would, but it was. It looked like I had sixteen babies inside my belly. I had one. <laughs> I mean, it was all belly. I gained like, I think it was like it was less than twenty pounds, wow. and it was all belly. So when I gave birth it was like done Done. I looked like you know but I will say (laughs) when I went to the gym everybody was envious I used to see people and they would be like looking at that belly sometimes me doing you know my little weights because I worked out through my pregnancy I got a prenatal trainer Um, it was really important to me to stay active but also know what not to do Mm -hmm. because I didn't want to harm the little man uh, inside my belly but some guys would be like the belly was, and I was working out. They were like, how's she doing how's that? She doing that? So that was a little awkward. I will say that being hella pregnant in the gym can be a but little you bit did awkward. It. I did it. I was, oh, was going to get my workout in. That's it. But guys were like, what is going on over there? All right. Um, this is really interesting to me, this topic. It talks about the best exercise time being different for men and women. I was reading up. I don't know if you know anything about this. It's There's a whole group of people now that are saying that women burn more body fat. This article is from the BBC. Women burn more body fat during morning exercises, whereas evenings counted more for men. Um, so it, it talks about like different time frames, mm-hmm. And it also talks about, and this is a secondary piece uh, about tracking your cycle, that apparently women, sh- there's a new trend that women should exercise based on their hormonal cycle. Mm-hmm. That in the first part of the cycle, I don't know if you know anything about this, but the first part of the cycle, you're more, your body is most similar to that of a man's. And you could you should actually do more like powerlifting, heavy weights, like long runs, hot yoga, hill repeats. And in the second half of the cycle, there's a high hormonal load for women. So you want to do like moderate cardio, yoga and Pilates so that if you're working as a trainer with a female client and you don't know this information, you might be pushing them and they might not be able to perform as well because of just the time in the hormonal cycle. Have you ever heard of this stuff? Could could be. You know, I'd I sit here, I'll tell you, I'd be lying if I knew for exactly by yeah. detail, by detail. I've heard stuff about, you know, women and the, their, you know, hormone cycles and, you know, that there's certain exercises that benefit more than others depending on where they're at. I've heard yeah. of that. To my knowledge of, of the full extent of how that yeah. works, I can't sit here and say I'm an expert yeah. at that. My whole thing when it comes, especially with the time stuff, my whole thing is this, like, and and 
there could be times that might be better um, for certain individuals to work out as a whole. I don't know about men and women. Maybe that's something new that they're studying now. But this is my take on everything. I think in such a world that we live in where everything's so fast and busy now, I just want you to move. Find yeah, the time to move. Right. Like this whole thing of like, oh my God, <laughs> if I don't work out now at 9 p.m. because I'm a man, I'm not going to go ahead and get an extra 2% of muscle gain. I really don't give a shit. Right. I just want to make sure that I'm healthy, I'm moving, I'm getting stronger, whatever time I can plug it in. Because right. if I'm going to sit there again and stress and panic over a specific time now, because I have to do it at this time and I have to rearrange my whole schedule to fit this 8 p.m. slot, 7 p.m. slot to make sure, because I'm going to get an extra 2%, of, I can care less. Yeah. So, you know, so for me, I'm just like, let's just move our bodies. Mm -hmm. Let's get our work in. Hell, heck, if it does work great and you have the time to do it, for all means, go do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But for the majority of people, I just want you to move. Also, Make time, time of find day, time to move. like, could be very individual. Like, my husband likes to work out. If he had his druthers, he would work out at, like, 6 a.m. Don't talk to me at 6 a.m. I don't want to know like, forget it. at 6 a.m. <laughs> you know, I my ideal time is more like a 10 a.m. So it might be, like, every person's individual, like, your sleep cycle, like, yeah. how you sleep, 100%. all that stuff. So keep that in mind. But I do think the component for women... I think is really interesting about the hormonal cycle because every study that I was looking at was saying that men didn't have a lot of flexibility on like it didn't really matter that much to them in terms of like you know times of day but women were very impacted by this stuff and I think our hormones play such a huge role in how we feel yeah. and like what your body is prepping for yeah. and then pregnancy is a whole other layer I was like Ex layers deep of exhaustion that I had not felt before where I was trying to push myself but my body was like no this is like not chill. what's happening right now like you need to respect what we're doing so just listen bottom line listen to your body I will tell you and guys I will tell you this when it comes to any men or women um, as a coach I say the most important thing you need to understand is you have to know learn how to adapt mm. if you're not a coach that knows how to adapt then you're not doing your work to the fullest extent so yeah. what I mean by that is that if you get somebody uh, whether they're on a mental cycle, they're just overly stressed or they're not feeling, they didn't yeah. sleep well, they're not doing too well, their mindset is not completely there, they had a, an argument with their significant other before coming to you. As a coach, you need to understand that your plan might change, your program, yeah. you might have a heavy day that day, that day ain't heavy anymore. You right. might have to alter that routine or that workout that specific day because you putting load, load is stress. Working out is stress on the body. Mm -hmm. It's a good stress, but stress is stress. Yeah. So if you're stacking stress on top of stress, top of stress, you're making it worse. So as a professional, you need to understand if you're getting an individual that's coming in here like that, hey, what's going on? Talk to me. Take five, right. 10 minutes. Okay, this is what we're going to do today. We're still going to do something because it's going to help you, but our original plan, we're going to move that for tomorrow or the next thing. So that way you can come much in a better, in a better, you know, headspace body space, spiritual, whatever it is that you're dealing with, we're going to make sure you're going to come in better prepared tomorrow. So today we're going to do this. We might do some breathing drills. We might work more on our mobility. We might work on some body weight movements, some light work. Right. Let's just do other things that maybe we haven't been doing as much. Let's do that today. Things are going to be more de-stressing. So that way tomorrow you can come in and lift the heavy mm -hmm. weights. And as a coach, you have to understand, don't always stick to your <coughs> routine like yeah. glue. Be adaptable. Yeah, my best advice for people would be like, you need a trainer you can talk to. I've been in bad situations where I've had a trainer and you show up and they don't listen. They're like, I don't care. This is the plan. And you're like, uh -huh, that's not going to help me. Like my head is now in the wrong place. Like you need to pay attention. Also, if you go to talk to a trainer and you're like, this hurts. And they're like, oh no, pain is gain, pain is gain. It might actually oh, no, be no, that no, you're no. going to hurt yourself. That the stuff is thing. like the worst. And I've had that worst. thrown my way too. Okay, this is really cute. This is <laughs> muscle and fitness. We asked 25 women, what do you hate about men in the gym? What is it? What is <laughs> so it? So there's a bunch here. I'm just going to read a few that stuck out for me. We got women who me. want women gyms and not <laughs> no, women. No, no, we did that one <laughs> I covered that first. This is, I absolutely, this is the first one. I absolutely hate when men care more about taking selfies than about working out. I have seen this. I can't. For some reason, it's more like when you see a guy doing the selfie game, it just, it's just a little it's more like, nauseating bro, bro, doing, than the bro? women doing the selfie game. I don't know why. Guys in my building all the time, like doing this and then the, I'm just like, I can't. Guys, it's not a good look. I, I just, I don't think it's a good look. Do you think it's a good look for men to be taking really. selfie? Yeah, no, it's not. not really. We're telling you straight. We're trying to help you. All right. This is great. I was at the gym the other day, walked into the weight room and was hit with a cloud of sweat, B.O. <laughs> Guys are gross. I hate it when they act like the whole weightlifting area is their domain and they're allowed to smell like garbage. Put on some deodorant and don't fart. 
men. Don't fart. While you're on the treadmill next to me and act like no one can tell where the stench is coming from. You know you've all done it. All this being said, it's gross to smell overpowering, overpowering cologne while working out too. So basically, listen, men. I've seen this before too. I have seen it. Men eat, I don't know, do you guys eat like a ton of beans before you go to the gym I'll, or something? You're I'll working out. I'll tell you out. this, both men and women I've trained in my <laughs> lifetime, I've probably encountered about 20 farts. 20 farts, that's Easily. all? Easily. That's not even, that's, I mean, it's sometimes it's really aggressive. Maybe even more, I but I'll tell you right now, like I've had squat sessions, I've had deadlifting sessions, I've, I'm like, I'll just pretend like nothing happened. Like just, nothing I just, happened. I, they'll just know like, why are you directing me from over here? <laughs> See, that's the difference between him and I. This is why I can't be a trainer. And also, see why I say I can't run for president. I can't be a trainer because I would be like, dude, what did you do? Did you just fart? That stinks. Stop doing that. I would say it. I would. This is why no one would pay me. Tyler's like, you, you're just going to have to stay here and have your mic. And that's going to be it, Jed. No other options. All the other career doors are closed. <laughs> All right. But this person says blatantly flexing in the mirror. We did that already. Um, Oh, this woman doesn't like when they ask to do sets with you and share the same machine or equipment. Ask to do sex with you. They, sets. Sets. You took. Oh, sets. I sets. said, I thought you said sex. I was like, wait. I was like, this is the first one. I was like, wait, wait, wait. Anthony was like, was someone like, wait, in the wait, gym wait, asked to do sex. And you, on the, I thought really? you said sex and then rep, reps on the. I was like, wait, sex reps on the machine? What's going on over here? You could do sex reps on a machine. Yeah, I would yeah. not advise it. If it's that's dangerous. the new kinky tools that they're selling. There you go. You never know. People do weird stuff on the yeah. machines in the gym. But I guess with the sets is like, you got to load a lot of weight for the guy. Then you got to take a lot of weight off. Like, just let me do my set. I'll be done in two minutes. And then you can load all. That is a little bit annoying. It is annoying. I will say that. I would say. And one that is brought up constantly about men is the grunting. Apparently, guys do all the grunting all the time. And I hear it all the time. And usually, it's guys who are trying to lift weight they're not supposed to be lifting. Like, it's too heavy. It does happen. Is that, are you, do you advise, is this something that, they're is grunting advised by trainers? Well, it's funny because it's like, there's a there's a level of grunting that's just like, dude, why do you have to be grunting like that? <laughs> but actually like hard breathing and certain noises actually helps you with, really? with certain lifts and actually helps you. Um, I'm gonna start doing that. Yeah, so obviously there's a way to do it and there's a level to do it. Oh at. no, I'm gonna but do it. If you're it, out I'm here going, screaming off the top of your lungs like something's like dude why are you doing this not, you don't understand i've had i'll tell you a little <laughs> what quick do you story. see too? i'll tell you a Can little you quick share story with some of the stuff? so when i used to work remember bally's yeah oh so yeah that was my first uh training job i remember mm. working at bally's and there's this one guy super roided guy I used to go to the machine um all the time take that same own it for like he would like own that machine for a while where nobody can touch it, it was his screaming to, ah! to the top of his lungs like <laughs> you, the whole gym can hear it from the front desk <laughs> And I remember, like, people would complain about him all the time. He would come and start, he's like, I can do whatever I want. I pay membership. I can scream at the top of my lungs. He would go, ah, 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 start screaming everywhere. And people were just like, what's wrong with this guy? And I remember one day there was this old lady who, um, she was just doing um, pull downs on the tricep machine, uh, tricep pull downs on the cable right next to him. And he literally yelled. And she turned around, looked at him. He went up to her and went, ah at her face no. and she literally just collapsed collapsed and he's like what are you looking at and she <laughs> freaked out told the front desk she was she's like what's wrong with this guy taking well, some type it, of steroids yeah this guy was on, on this guy was on steroids this guy was not <laughs> not not at no 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 no. that was probably the worst screaming experience i hear it a lot i hear a lot of probably saying. experienced myself sometimes they feel like guys grunt because they want you to look to see that they're lifting a really yeah, heavy weight could be. and then you look and you're like Mm -hmm. and then you look away but it's sometimes be an ego thing really too. aggressive just their own ego. and I had a woman in my gym um, out here that complained to a guy he was grunting away and she was like can you stop doing that and he was just like mm. he didn't know what to do it was awkward as all hell maybe. I did watch though I did watch that exchange go down maybe they're grunting to mask a fart Oh man, Tyler, you had to take me back to that place. <laughs> Don't fart in the gym. Oh, listen, okay, if you have to fart in the gym, because everybody has to fart sometimes, right? Maybe you did eat a big sack of beans or some taco tacos on the way there, it happens. Go to an area of the gym where no one is and stay there until it dissipates. Don't bottom. be bringing it back. And then there's like a trail, it's a fart trail. All right, so I'll say that, I'm not gonna say, obviously I'm gonna say names, but I had this one individual. I remember this was one, I think it was, I think it was LA Fitness already. Uh, this one individual was doing um, squats. And I remember, like, we were talking and ripped one. And I was just like, <laughs> step to the side. He's just hanging out. He knew I, and I was just like, okay, cool. Goes back on there. Goes on the squats again. Rips another one. Oh, and I was just like, God. Was like, hey, buddy, you good? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he goes, he's going to go into the bar. And he's like, 
you don't mind me, um, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. I felt so bad. Oh, my God. He literally had sharded. No. <laughs> and it was literally all over his white shorts at the bottom of the white shorts. Oh, my God. Imagine like, that. Oh, my. Shit his pants in white shorts <laughs> in the gym. It was bad. It was, did he come back? He did with another pair of shorts on. Another pair. But how do you like that moment's yeah. got to play over and over again in your and I mind? Said, and I said, "Bro, you good?" Oh. And he's like, "No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good now." I was like, "Okay, okay, oh, you, you want to finish?" And he's the, like, "Yeah, yeah, I want to." I'm like, "Okay." The deep shame. I feel bad. He's lucky he Ooh. came in at a downtime. It was like probably like 3 30, 4 p.m. Yeah, so rush hour hadn't hit yet, so that wasn't too many people. But it, Ooh, I just felt bad for him overall. Lord, well, good for him for bringing another pair of shorts. Good for him. Imagine yeah, he didn't have home. And, right. no, and he brought out the black shorts. Adam, not the white. Well, he should have started <laughs> with them. Just in case, <laughs> just in case he brought the black shorts. Again. I was like, oh, I see you. Oh man, Ooh, I never thought about that. Good lord, wow. All right, we have a few videos that I want to close with that are some crazy things that people do in the gym yeah. that. Sometimes you just ask yourself why, 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 why. So let's we're gonna go through one by one. Tyler, you have those. You have those. Okay, whenever you're ready. Okay, so let's see what do you got here. This is uh, quite entertaining. I mean, why though? What is going on here? He tried to make that sit up a little hard. Look, look, look. Ooh. Oh, risk over reward. Don't do it, people. Risk is too big. Don't do it. Now, if Don't you're gonna do, do that, can't you take a little plate and just? You know what he's trying to do? This little thing, this little move. So like even then, like there's so much better Why? ways to do what you're trying to achieve. Like, do you just see so this stuff though? Like they cut yeah, videos. You I do see, see uh, it now. I like there's one that I see now. I guess it's like a trend going on where you got these guys. Um, you know, usually people they'll do pull ups and they'll yeah. put like a kettlebell or some weight to you know get stronger in their pull ups. Now they're putting a whole entire bench, like a s benching bench, strapped to the the weight belt, and they're literally doing pull ups with a freaking bench hanging from their legs. I'm like, I think that we have that. We might have that. Or one. the How guys that take the ellipticals up with them. Or the, um, the bikes up with him? Yeah. Stop. No, I gotta oh, yeah. see that. If you have Stop one with a bike, it. I gotta see that. Stop it. I gotta see that. Okay, let's do the second one. I don't remember what I pulled here, so oh I don't know God. if we There's... have. I pulled. Uh, this one is uh, tough to see because it's like all different stuff. It's a compilation. Look, she's going all the way up off the Jeez. chair. This guy. Oh, I've is seen just this playing, guy before. Playing around. I know some type of. But this one, I don't know what he's doing. Standing on one leg up in the middle of the air. This guy's still going in the it's background. Like Frogger. This is terrible. She's afraid to do the jump. Clearly, that's too high for her. Takes it. Oh, 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 oh. and then oh, and then over the neck. Whew. That was more. She just needed to know. She needed to bring that box level. Bring that down. box down that's to it. like half the yeah. half the height. Yeah. When I met my husband, he was doing box jumps like that. I'm not kidding. The it was like this high. And I was like, this guy's got springs in his feet. And I was like, how's he doing that? That was like the first intrigue I had toward him. I was like, what is going on over there? I definitely wasn't able to jump that high, I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, we got one more from see Hard Aesthetics, I think it's called. When the personal trainer leaves you alone for 10 minutes. Look. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Listen, you got to he's trying to get creative. He's and it's it is funny though because if even if you work with a trainer, I don't know what happens, man. Something clicks off in the brain, and I have it too. The second they leave, I'm like, I can just turn I can turn around on this machine and do it the opposite way. I'm like, all of a sudden, I can do it from midair. You're like I got all these ideas. Oh look, I can do it with my feet on a ball, and I'm suspended in midair. Oh look, I can hold the oh TRX like God. this. I I am that person. Like my shoulder dislocation was my fault because I was in a ridiculous position. But what happens to us when the trainers leave the room? It's like we think we've learned enough to just get creative and sometimes- I guess the, the confidence. Good. Maybe a little too much maybe, confidence. Maybe. I, I got one story <laughs> yeah. to share because you guys are gonna laugh. Yeah. Um, so you guys are familiar with the power plate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the power plate. So I remember I had just started- For people who aren't, can you explain what that yeah, is? Yeah, it's like a, a vibrating machine and you you know, you know, basically stand on it. You could do certain exercises. You can use it for also recovery or to change, you know, like basically the base of support so it can challenge you to be able to get stronger. You like uh, stand on stability. it, you hold it, and yeah. it like vibrates. And it vibrates. Um, there's different levels. I think it goes up to 10, depending on the model. So I just started at Equinox. I think it was there like three, four months. Um, and I, and I remember I was there on the floor doing my floor shifts. I got some of my buddy, my colleagues, there's like three or four of them, and they're laughing in a corner. And I'm like, yo, what are you guys laughing at? It's like 3, 3.45, 4 p.m., and um, they're like, bro, just come over here. And I'm like, all right, all right. So I go over there, and I'm like, all right, what's going on? What are we looking at? They're like, just look at the power play. I'm like, okay, I'll just look at the power play. Five minutes pass by, I'm like, 
what's going on and they're like bro just chill just chill wait until you see the person they're gonna come out of the bathroom whatever just watch the power play i'm like okay so we see this lady come out and i'm like are we looking at her and he's like yeah keep looking so lady comes out and she goes to the corner grabs like four or five yoga blocks and she starts stacking it on oh, the power no. play stacks it like can't end well she puts like two like this, two like this, and then she puts one pointing up. Then she grabs all the towels from Equinox right there in the corner, starts putting towels all over the yoga. I'm like, I'm like, yo, what is this lady doing? And they're like, just keep watching. And um, she sits in it and straddles it, and then she rips the power plate to like level 10, and she's holding on the bars, and she's with her eyes rolling back. And I'm like, is this lady doing what I think she's doing? And I was like, this lady's using the power plate. <laughs> as a vibrator no stop <laughs> and she was literally going to town just there with her legs like this and eyes rolling back and she was just like this the whole time like was this I'm, like young or an older woman older woman like closer to 50 and i was just like what is going on here and we're just like and i was like does this happen they're like she comes every like tuesday and thursday she comes right before rush hour she does her little 10 minute routine and then she goes to the cardio section and i'm like well she's making the best use of her she membership using the power play as whatever it's power plate whatever it's yeah. called as a vibrator as a no shame too no. that woman too if you stare at her <laughs> she will walk away and be like this is harassment she why are a, you watching i guess she me? found a hack in the system or wow something. I don't know. that's some people have some gonads i got other stories but that, that 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 right there See, you never know. Listen, people, take a look around your local gym. You never know. The you possibilities know. are endless of what you could you be doing in the gym. <laughs> never know what you'll wow. see or what you might do. I really didn't even, <laughs> until you said it, my mind couldn't even go there because I was like, you really couldn't do that in a public space. Oh, no, space, no, no. But, yeah. wow. People will do the, the wildest stuff. Just when you think you've seen it all, man, that would have been something. See, I, that, I wouldn't have been able to control myself. I would have been laughing like a hyena right through that gym. Probably <laughs> no, I had, to, I had to leave right after like two minutes. I had to literally, because I was going to start cracking up. That's too much, man. Tyler would walk into that gym and be a little bit distressed. Tyler, I feel bad for the to, people using the yoga gym, blocks. You see women using machinery as vibrators. That's not supposed to happen, just so you know. Isn't that, don't you go to a gym to find a guy to do that for you? Well, I mean, I don't know, man. She's an older woman. Maybe she's married. Things aren't happening at home the way they Who ought knows? to be. Maybe she don't want another partner, but she needs a little satiation. Maybe she worked out real hard and there's a lot of build up there going on. You never know. Don't want to judge, but maybe, I don't know, do something in the privacy of the bathroom area. Just saying. Okay. <laughs> well, this was a blast. Tyler, we want to check in with you again to see if we have anything. Also, guys, remember, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button if you like these conversations that we're having. If you want to hear more about the um, intimate things people are doing in your local gym, we can do more segments like this. <laughs> this doesn't have to be the last one. <laughs> You never know oh, what man. you're going to get on Jed and I Feel Alive. Hour. People are like, Jed, this is this is why I follow you. It's for the juice. It's for the juice. Anything else you want to share with us before we bid farewell today? Todd? Yes. Uh, Kiara, I'm trying to find it. Asked, okay, thyroid and weight gain. Is that just a myth? Is it like being big boned? So when it comes to thyroid, definitely there's medical issues that people are going to face, you know, certain um, issues that they're going to have with their health that will hold them back. You know, definitely thyroid is one that you see that holds people back from having weight problems and weight gain. And definitely it's something there that is going to make it harder for you. Do I think it's going to be the only contributing factor to you're going to be now this huge obese individual? No, not necessarily. I think if you learn how to be able to work around the thyroid issue, you get the right help you need, the right professionals that know how to work with that, and you keep yourself moving and you're eating properly. Will it be harder? Will you have to probably put it extra work than maybe the average individual? Sure, you might have to, but you know what? If that's what you're willing to do because you want to keep yourself at least a somewhat of an appropriate weight and healthy, then you got to do what you got to do. But will those individuals face probably a slighter bigger challenge they will but again at the end of the day it's how bad you want it and if you're gonna see that as an excuse to just let yourself go then you lost already i don't know if her name was kiara if i had that right kiara my unsolicited advice i don't know if you saw the show we had yesterday with dr g um or wednesday with dr g take a look at it sometimes thyroid is triggered by chemical toxins sometimes th thyroid is triggered by a lot of things that traditional medicine doctors don't think of and look beyond the diagnosis on the thyroid i can tell you that um, 
figure out the why too. Um, there's some stuff at the root of that when it comes to thyroid that can be kind of complicated. So it would be worth a look. That's Actually, my um, unsolicited advice. IHPs, IHPs um, who are working heavily with figuring out details in your blood and they're working out with doctors where they're figuring out root causes to like thyroid being one yep. of the things. So root causes are a big thing. We yep. just had uh, Dr. Gonzalez, a naturopath on, on Wednesday. I'm going to have Dr. Will Cole, I don't know if you guys know who he is. He's a functional medicine doctor that's sought after like throughout the world. Um, every celebrity you know is seeing Dr. Cole. Um, he really knows about food and supplementation and really gets to the root of the why, deals with like mold toxins and exposures. To, he's fascinating. Especially he's in come Florida, on. that's huge. Mold. I know, mold. I'm actually having some trouble actually here because I am sensitive to mold and mm. the amount of mold in the air, like my eyes have been really itchy. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, we're gonna test you for mold. And I'm like, oh, yay, 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 yay. Anything else, Tyler, we have? Yes, uh, possible supplements people might lack as they start aging. Possible supplements people might lack. Or, or supplements to take as you age. Oh, supplements to take? Depends on the body. First I was going to say, like depends say on that. the body, depends on the person, depends on your previous lifestyle, the lifestyle you've been living overall. You know, so everybody's different. You know, I would definitely say like... Again, I'm always going to say, when we talk supplement, the best thing you could do is feed yourself the right nutrients by eating right, whole foods, moving your body, exercising, go back to what you're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. you know, don't rely on just thinking supplements is going to be my thing. That's what they want you because that's mm -hmm. what these companies make all their money. So they that's want you right. to bandaid an issue instead of take care of an issue. So when it comes to something like, you know, you'll see a lot of people, you know, vitamin, like their, their B vitamin, their D vitamins, even C, like you see those things drop. But it's like, I can't sit here and tell you, hey, this is exactly what happens to, you know, older individuals. It's just all around. Everybody's a little bit different. Go back to exercising. Go back to eating well and whole foods. Yeah, everyone really is different on supplementation based on what you eat and what you're not eating. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to say that. I will say two things. Um, again, my unsolicited. I'm sure these questions are for Anthony, but, you know, I'm feisty. I have to jump in. Um, most people are vitamin D deficient. Mm -hmm. Most vitamin D supplements don't help you very much get out get some sunshine 100 percent. have to get that sunshine for multiple reasons vitamin d being one of them another um thing to look up look up nad um there are a lot of supplements that your body loses nad as you get older there's a supplement called nativim that i love um, again i'm not prescribing any supplements for you because i don't know your particular condition but you might want to research nad and see what role that plays always look at your minerals but by and large anthony is 100 percent correct most of this should be coming through food. The reason that people gorge on supplements is because they eat like crap mm -hmm. and they have to try to fill those gaps. Most supplements are not absorbed well in the body. You only absorb a certain percentage of you it. You secrete in your the rest. You secrete it. Um, it's 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 just not it's not like oh I eat like crap so let me take this and it doesn't work like that so you're better off to eat those whole foods yep. fruits vegetables the meats like I order my meats from a farm for a reason um, that stuff really is going to make a huge difference but those are my two that I would look at the vitamin D from the sun and NAD is really fascinating when you get into research on that and what happens how much you, you lose of it as you age and when you replace it what it does in terms of like kind of reigniting your cells fascinating stuff. Um, yes. Got, got one more. Yeah. Uh, getting older into your 40s, where your metabolism slows down. Uh, I've heard of no, I've heard no matter how much you work out, sometimes it's just focusing on fixing your metabolism. Again, I would say like everybody's different. You know what I mean? With, with due time and age, you might experience some slowness in the way that your body produces the way that your body grows the way your body shifts sure but again it goes back to what's the previous lifestyle you're living you know so if you were an individual that was never active before 40 then 100 percent you're going to experience a lot more barriers than somebody who was active playing sports or outdoors or exercising most of their life approaching 40 i know 40 year old women and men who look amazing compared to 20 year olds nowadays 50 even teenagers so yeah. you know i think again it goes back to a lot of like what were you doing before you hit 40 mm -hmm. you know and even when you get to 40 and you haven't really had a healthy lifestyle start living a healthy lifestyle like right. just because now doesn't mean like oh my god i'm, I'm fucked no start figuring it out and again there could be other things that you might want to figure out what's the root causes of what's causing you to have certain issues go figure that out go find that out from a specialist and they'll be able to pinpoint what that is you can start addressing that and then you can see certain things correct themselves and then you'll start feeling better moving better and whatever it is that you might have an issue with yeah the body is an intricate machine very intricate. Um, we're still learning and about it's it. not like you know 
oh, after 40, this happens. That may not be you. That may be somebody else. The, the root yeah. cause of why that's happening could be really, really complicated. Um, I hear from women a lot post-pregnancy, though, that struggle with the belly area. Yeah. And I will say this, like, y'all see that I'm, I'm small, but let me tell you something. Your stomach, your skin stretches, right? So odds are you are going to look a little bit different post-pregnancy, but you have to kind of embrace a little bit of that. You have to know that like, you know, some of these celebrities you see out there, I know Kim Kardashian was recently putting out like, oh, this is how I fix my belly. And it's like some laser. Yeah. You're, your chef, your that, God knows mm -hmm. what other procedure you did. Just like, don't yeah. believe the hype. You have a baby, your skin gets stretched. It's not just going to be like that. There's it a reason work. why JLo looks like JLo. And yes. women at that age that are like, wow. They spend a lot of money, have the money to do that. And yep. there's a lot of invasive stuff that goes on. And so don't be so hard on yourself, ladies. I hear that all the time. I also have, I'm yeah. small. I have stretched skin that's a little, like, it is what it is. And it's don't like, go on social media and compare yourself. No, because it's all Men filtered. It's yeah, all filtered. Don't. It's all doctored. It's all bullshit. Most of it anyway. Most of it, not all. Well, Anthony, I had a blast today. Thank Same you here. for coming this and doing this shoot the shit. Very and fun. maybe I'll come down. You can find me a nice badass trainer. I got you. And I'll come down and do a session. Maybe we can record that and see what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. That would be fun. And uh, maybe I'll grunt. Who knows? A little grunty. Just don't fart. That's it. Maybe I'll fart. Hopefully I don't shart. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> don't bring the if white shorts. If you learned anything bring white, from today's no episode, don't go to the gym after you've had bean tacos. Shart in your white shorts. That could be bad. That's the lesson. That's how we tie a nice little, nice little neat bow on the Jedi Be Alive show. Thank you for being here. We'll be back on Monday. It'll be just me. Sorry to disappoint. Rolling through some headlines. I'm fired up. I'm already fired up, so you can imagine how I'm going to be on Monday. Have a great weekend. Enjoy some tacos. Don't shart. See you then.